Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here and joining us. I am in Brooklyn, New York, and it's fun to see where all of you are joining from. I see people all over the States and Germany, Ontario and Canada. And It's so fun. So thanks for being here. I, I'm excited to do to work on this uh, project with everyone. And this is a well, first I should say, for any of you who don't know me, my name is Samantha Dion Baker, and I am an artist, an author, an illustrator, and I live in Brooklyn, New York. I'm here in my studio in an area called Dumbo. And I am um, I have I have three books out on drawing. The first one is called Draw Your Day, all about keeping an illustrated sketch journal. And the second book is called Draw Your World. And that just goes a little deeper into finding inspiration in the world around and how to capture it all on paper in various ways. And, um, and then I have a kid's book called Draw Your Day for Kids. And yeah, I teach and I work on uh, commissions and small projects and some design projects as well. And one of my favorite things to doodle and draw is wood wood grain. I just love it. It's very meditative. It's very calming. You can kind of just let the lines flow and it, it just sort of anything goes. Um, and once you do it more and more, then you, you know, you sort of get into a rhythm with it. So we're gonna start with pencil and then I'm gonna work in ink and then we'll paint. So I encourage you to follow along. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you to Vicki, since you have all three books. <laughs> um, yeah, so follow along or not, just, you can just watch. But you know, wood, wood, wood grain sort of pops up all different places and you know, if you're drawing nature outside, trees, drawing sort of the bark and knots in the wood, wood on, that you see on trees, to, you know, furniture in your home, to a, a wooden spoon that you find in your kitchen, uh, you'll find these patterns in a lot of places. So, all right, let's focus on, if we can shift the focus to my, to my desk. Thank you. So I, I downloaded a few or printed out, I should say, a few samples. There, there are so many different beautiful woods. I, and I, I don't, I'm not a, a wood person. I'm not a pro. I, I can't identify different woods. Um, I can a little bit, but not, not really. So, but I, I just, um, if you just look at these, like uh, the annual rings in, a, in the trunk of a tree, if you do like a cross section like this, this is a way, you know, really, really fun way of just, you know, going around and around and getting used to these lines. And so we'll probably start with that. The little dot in the middle is called the pith, which I used to know and I've just relearned. And then obviously all the way about all these annual rings, um, depending on how, how old the tree is, all the way out to the bark. This is the zebrano wood, which is just so beautiful these dark and uh, light lines. I don't know what, what wood this is, but I'm just showing you how crazy it can get and fun. Uh, and, you know, so when you're actually drawing, it, there's no mistakes, like anything, anything goes. So I think I'm gonna start on the left here and we'll start in pencil. So I, in the materials list, I told you to have a pencil. I'm using a 3B pencil but you can use any, any pencil that you have. We're really not gonna need the eraser. But so I, I usually start with like a little knot that's kind of shaped like a little like oblong. And sometimes there's like a, maybe that is the pit, I'm not sure, but or just like one little knot and it's dark in the middle. And then you, you just can, you can go around and around with your pencil, kind of the same as like, maybe you would draw a letter pushing down on some of the strokes and pulling up on some of the strokes. And sometimes those lines can get really close to each other. Sometimes they go further apart. And I just, you know, just keep going. 
And then eventually that stops. And usually there's lines that sort of form around, around that, around these knots. So we can just do like an up and down one line and then just keep playing around with that. And you, you know, the inspiration that a lot of artists get when they do these um, meditative sort of uh, line work within ink, I, I think that they're very often inspired by wood grain. So on this side, it, it sort of meets up. And, you know, and like I said, anything goes and maybe there's another knot here. And your, your lines can like go over each other or not. Some of them can be, some of them, some of them you can even fill in because there's a lot of tone and different, different tones in these rings. If anybody has questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer. Molly, just, I'm not, I'm not looking at the chat, but yes, I'm gonna use the, the paints. I'm right now just starting with pencil. So yeah, I just, it's it, if you the other nice thing about these patterns is, and I, I'm off, often telling people to use their whole page. So this is a really nice way of making sure that you go from edge to edge and and just play around from top to bottom or side to side, playing with these these lines. We can get really, really close together. Do all sorts of funky things. I'm going to make this not a little bit darker. As you can see, I'm, I'm really pulling and pushing with the pencil. And it's nice to have a, a, a softer graphite if you're drawing these patterns in pencil, just so you can really push and pull. Let's say the grain gets really tight right here. So the lines are almost touching. But I think that gives you the idea of, yes, some of Diana saying it's, it's very cool because there's no right or wrong way. That's what I love. It's just very meditative. You, you don't have to worry about, about your mistakes. If you are drawing the wood pattern in contained in an object that you're, that, that you're drawing, even so, even then anything goes within that shape. If it's, wrapped around the side of a table, you know, the grain can sort of go wrap around the curve, sort of, sort of like the image of the bowl in the, the painting that I used as the main image to promote this class. Um, we, can, we can talk about that when I get to the paint. So I think I'll stop there with 
pencil for now and we'll move on to ink because I do want to spend a good amount of time painting. But I just want to share how it how it can look in various using various materials. So I'm using a Derwent line maker in point three. You can use anything that, that you have on hand. These are very good. I'm just gonna do kind of the same thing. And maybe this time I'll make a bigger knot in, in a sort of straighter grain. You can even do what I just did and skip some lines. So have your kind of the same way that you are lip pulling and pushing down with a pencil with the ink. You can do that with, with your pen and that, and that means you get some little empty spaces, which kind of sometimes happens in wood grain. Sometimes they'll just be like little lines like that in the grain. This is a really nice class to follow along, as you can tell, because you really, you really can't make it make a mistake here. You just have fun with the lines. Sometimes these lines in ink are fun to play with because they can get really thick and black. fill in some of this strokes with more ink. All of my knots I'm noticing are very long, elongated, but they can also be very round. You can do one like that too. And sometimes when these little knots happen, similar to what I did here, but they, the other lines wrap around them like that. Want again, even some of these long, dark, long strokes, and just add weight to them. Um, and then maybe there's some crazy little thing happening here. Making this one a little more a round shape rather than long. You can see anything goes. I'm just completely making this up.
So skipping your lines, not finishing them, random thicknesses. You can have fun because if you were to look at the wood patterns in, in your home, you'll see that it's, it's completely uh, random. So let's say I'm, I've got the handle of a spoon. Let's see, I'll just quickly draw the handle of a spoon. So that's a wooden spoon. Dimension. The, the wood grain can just be long lines sort of running along the whole length of the spoon. So you can see how you can fill in objects similar way that you would just randomly doodle. Sometimes they the grain can sort of wrap around the side. All right, I'm gonna move on to paint soon, but I wanted to just get a good amount of ink down and while you guys are all doing your own, playing around with your own Pen. This is the other great thing about these kinds of patterns is if you have a ballpoint pen at your desk, you can just use that as well. I mean, these patterns you can make with any medium. So pencil, ink, and now I'm going to move on to paint. And I'm not going to sketch first. I'm just going to start painting. And I think I'll do the trunk of a tree, sort of inspired by this. We'll start with that. And I'm using my ink tense paints. I don't have them in the frame, but these are one of my beloved palettes. This is the one that I keep in my studio. As you can see, I use it a lot. And these colors that we're gonna be using today, I use a lot as well. But consider you can do your wood grain patterns in any colors of the rainbow. So there's dyed wood, there's just, just like anything else, you can, you can make your wood patterns any color you want. So I'm kind of getting a mix of the three browns plus a little bit of Payne's gray. I'm just getting a really dark brown, warm, blackish brown color. Sorry, I'm gonna put my palette down and so that I can that I can paint. But it was really, um, it's really just using the the browns in in my palette. So those of you who are using the intense palette. Um, it's really, really just that family of four colors that I'm using right now. So I'm going to start with that pith, as they call it. Have I used traditional watercolor all the time? I, I, for years, I have used watercolor. I learned about the Intense paints a few years ago, and I, I really love them. So, and now I'm just painting another circle around in a lighter color. And I might do another ring of that because the ring colors kind of repeat. So, but I'm gonna fill in all, I'm not, I'm not leaving that. The great thing about Intense is it dries quickly. And if you go over it with another color, 
it also dries flat, so you can sort of paint right on top. So now I've got more of the yellow ochre. That in that space. The ink and paints also tend to seep into the paper, so they lighten once they dry a little bit. These rings don't have to have that much different tone. I hope you're all following along and enjoying this. You can all also use the Inktense pencils. I have some of them right here. I didn't have them on my list, but I'm happy to show you if anybody wants. I can save that for the end. But there, you you really can get into the this this uh, the groove with this using so many different medium. So now my rings are going to get a little bit tighter. I'm using the darker brown. It's called uh, natural brown, the darkest brown. And I'm using the tip of my brush. And I'm just going to start making thinner. Thinner lines, kind of like the ink. It looks like the yearly rings in the sample I'm looking at kind of they get tighter and they get a little bit lighter. I'm making mine a little darker. So I'm not sure if that's accurate to what happens in real life, but how I'm doing it. Because there are no rules. Now I'm using the red ochre, which has got a little bit more red in it. And I'm making it kind of washy, and I'm going to go over these lines. So again, the really nice thing about ink tents is that it dries quickly, and you can layer. One of my favorite things about them. Lena, you're asking, do you go light and dark and then repeat? Sure. I mean, that's I'm I again, I'm I'm not really, I'm kind of glancing over at the reference, but I'm I'm not following it exactly. So if you mean what I just here, I I did the darker lines and then I went over it with a lighter wash. That that's what I did. I do I do find that that it seems like there's some sort of a a pattern in the when you look at like the cross section of a trunk of a tree. There are there are patterns, but it's not. 
I, don't, I really think it just varies from tree to tree. And then it's nice to, once you're getting towards the edge, or sometimes my, even on the 10th floor of my building, you can still hear the cars honking outside. So now I'm doing like a little bit of a wash, the lighter yellow over. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, playing around with the um, bark, and that gets a little thicker and thinner. I'm just going up, making little mountains around and then filling it in. So that, that's an example of how you can just, you know, have fun playing with the, the cross section of a, of a, a tree. And I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have to follow anything exactly. <laughs> it looks like a cinnamon bun. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go over to the next page here and we're gonna just now draw lines or paint, sorry, paint lines. I am going to fill this whole page with, with, with wood grain. And it's going to kind of flow like this, but you can also think of it as like waves or, or um, yeah, I mean, waves in the water. There's, you know, a lot of, a lot of different sort of connections to nature you can make as you're just started with a line, pushing and pulling just like I did with my pencil and my pen. And I'm gonna use different colors on my palette. And get thicker and thinner. very washy. So I'm just squeezing, using my Derwent water brushes and I'm just squeezing a lot of water. It's kind of like a little bit of a muddy mix, mix of all these colors. That's fine. And I'm just gonna do a nice wash. And this is an opportunity to play with the water and have the beautiful Something's happening outside. I'm kind of getting the page a little bit wet to play with. Is this the final one or is it practice? These are these are all exercises, let's say. If you want this, this can be considered the one of the one of the bigger projects. Somebody's asking if this is the final project. I made a little dip there.
And now here in this corner, I'm gonna I'm gonna create like a big dark knot. Kind of just like an amoeba shape. I know I've got the dark paint and I'm going around that a few times. I hope you're following along, but you can also just use this as inspiration. Again, this ring I'm filling in, just sort of random. Go over the whites with yellow ochre. I'm just switched to my smaller brush. This is the smallest size in the set of Derwent water brushes. So you can see I'm going to bring it up close. You can see how you're there's getting some nice flow in the, in the water, kind of similar to how wet on wet watercolor looks. You can incorporate that into your into your work as well. And the really nice thing is when you have a little bit pigment on your brush with the Derwent Intense paints, you can just even just with the lightest bit of pressure can just add more by going over and over because they just take to layering so well. So unfortunately in these classes, because they're only an hour, we can't, and there's a lot of people here, we can't share work, but I really, I would love it if you shared with any, anything that you're creating in your Instagram stories or, or a post, I would love to see and then be able to share because I know that you're all doing such beautiful, making such beautiful patterns, even if you think they're not. I mean, that that's the really, great thing about this kind of exercise is there's no right or wrong way. It's all, it's all beautiful. So I'm gonna let this dry. Would I might, would you move up the camera a bit? Hmm like that. I'm not sure. It looks pretty centered in my frame, so I hope you, everybody can see it. Somebody is asking to see the ink. This is pencil on the left, and on the right is the ink.
and you absolutely can combine. While I'm letting this dry, I don't push my pieces of paper together. I can show you how I might paint this spoon. I can fill the whole thing with this yellow ochre, the light wash of yellow ochre. So Molly and I, Molly, who's here from Derwent, and I were talking about how some people don't like how quickly the Derwent paints dry, but that's one of my favorite things about, about them. So this won't really take that long to dry. And I've just now added a little bit of a darker, one of the darker browns to my, to my water brush. I mean, sorry, to my, to, yeah, to my brush. And I'm just going to go over some of these lines. So it, that was super quick, but you can see how easy it is to sort of get the vibe and the feeling of wood by just going over with, with one solid wash of color and then a darker color and just creating these, these sort of loose fluid lines, just like I did in pencil and ink and now in paint. So now this is a little bit dry, a little bit more dry. I'm going to take my thicker brush again. Now the water is flowing from this one super well, so I'm just going to grab a bigger one. This is one of the brushes in the set as well, and it's a flat top. It's very, very thick. And I'm just going to show adding big wash over this whole thing, how I can sort of flatten it a little bit. So I'm um, hopefully hopefully you you can see what just happened there. But I went over everything that I had painted with a wash of a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of red ochre, mixing that in at the bottom of my my palette. I just painted over everything, and that's what I'm always referring to that that idea of layering. Sometimes in my work, the, uh, the painting that I use to promote the class, which I can show you the original, bring that over. Um, that was probably about 10 layers or so. So you can just keep layering and it's just so nice. So now I'm gonna do a different, Kind of pattern. And I'm just making stripes. Some of them are further apart from each other, some of them are closer together. This could be the side of a table. And Maybe the green kind of goes on a little bit of an angle here. Let's see, sort of changing my mind. But then the table angle changes.
Now I just squeeze water right over those lines. And if I keep painting over and over it, you can still see the original lines. Do you see? The materials were listed in the original listing of the class. I'm not sure if they're repeated when you get the follow-up email. I am the only things that I had on the materials list were the intense paints and water brushes, permanent pens so that you could paint over them. So permanent fine line pens and a pencil and eraser. And then I suggested having a rag to blot your, your paint on. That's how I cleaned my brush. But honestly, I have, because I'm using browns, I have not cleaned my brush very much this whole time. Um, because I'm just letting the water flow through and layering all the same colors. So we have about 15 minutes left. If there's any questions, this is a great time. I can definitely share a little more. I can go into more de detail and, and keep going on my the painting, just show different ideas. If anybody has, just pop it in the chat if anybody has any requests. I'm really sorry about the car, the truck's honking. I'm not sure what that's about, what's happening outside. I assume you can, you all can hear that. Somebody's asking if I can do silver birch. I don't know what that is. I would have to Google it. So I'm sorry, I'm not a wood expert. If that is a wood that has like a crazy grain in it, then. Oh yeah, the grain on a branch. That's a great idea. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And I do that a lot. It's a very good suggestion. Okay. Where should I put my branch? So this is my normal process in my, it's a silvery gray instead of brown. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I was saying before, you can make the wood grain any color you want. It's still gonna look like wood, even if you made it pink. So just have fun with that. I mean, um, someone, after you lay down the paint, do you ever go back and add wood texture lines on top? Yes, yes, you can do it that way too. You can just do a, a solid color and then, Add the wood grain. So let's see if I did a branch. To draw a trunk of a tree, maybe with a little knot on the side. And usually, where the, when the tree is in in shadow, there might be like I. This is how I would do it. I would add like more lines to the side. Branch coming out. And sometimes the branch might have some lines as it's sort of connecting. 
I'm just I'm just making this up. And there's a, maybe there's a branch coming out this way, and one that kind of does a turn here. Hey, Samantha, we have a question. Um, they asked, how do you add the fruit on top of the wood bowl? How did I add the, top, the, the fruit on top of the wood bowl? Well, it was all painted in one piece. So I'm going to spend just a few more minutes creating this tree, and then I'll go get that sketchbook and show you the original, and I'll talk through the process. So I'm going to kind of do this in a similar way. I'm just getting a bunch of the browns. And, um, well, actually, this time, this would be my normal process. So sorry, step back. I'm going to take the ink. This is a very dark pencil. So I'm only adding ink to the outside. And I might not erase all the pencil because I really like it. If I had used an ink tense pencil, then those lines would have just been, a, you, I could have painted them. But in a way, I don't want the lines to be completely blended in. I, I like the idea of them being, staying there. So I can see what happens though, if I add a bit of, what happens. I'm gonna just play around with one of these brown. One. What's this one? This one is red oxide. So I'm adding some of the ink tense pencil here just to show you what like water soluble pencil, how that would interact with the paint. But these weren't on my original list, but they're the same pigments, similar pigments to the paints but they're just in pencil form when you, so they're just, you know, bound differently, binding, and then when you add water, they come to life. Okay. So now I don't even actually have to add paint to my brush, but, when I drag the brush down, it activates that color. So I don't always erase my pencil. I kind of leave it there. Just my personal choice. I like the way it looks. To have all those layers there. But if you were to use a water-soluble pencil, then the, the pencil lines could blend right into the Sorry, I keep hitting my thing. So now I've got the thinner brush and I'm, I'm just adding some darks right over those lines, but you can still see them underneath. And as the light hits the side of the, the branch, maybe I leave a little bit of highlight there on that on the side. Can even add the paints gray or black. This is not totally dry, but I'm just going to wing it to add more lines.
so yeah, it really, it's really, um, thank you for suggesting the tree branch because it is something that I do quite often. I was focusing on the patterns, but not as much how they work in action kind of. So I'll just quickly grab, because we have about eight minutes, I'll quickly grab the sketchbook with the hole in it. And Find it. There's a bunch of wood actually in this sketchbook. No, I'm not finding it. I can flip through. There's some wood here. I didn't do too much rain in there, but the focus was on the dog. There's some wood here on this table. There's some wood here. See, it happens a lot. Where is this beautiful? There it is. I think it's in this book. Okay. So I sketched the whole thing the same way I would any other drawing. And then I just built layers and layers. So, and when I shared this piece, I think on my Instagram, there's about four or five slides to that initial share, which was back in December, 2021. And I showed the layers. So if you wanna try and look for that, maybe I can share it in my stories if I can. I can find it. And if I'm not mistaken, I know that I had shared the layers somewhere. I think it was on Instagram, but it was really just kind of how I was doing here, like very light washes. And then I just kept painting layers on top. So I didn't paint the fruit on top of the bowl. I painted them at the same time. So I don't know if that answers the question from a little while back, but you can do that though if you're using other medium like wash or acrylic or, or even oil opaque paints you can paint the bowl and then actually paint fruit right on top because it's fully opaque um, but you you can't do that with with watercolor and the sort of the way that i draw that all has to be done at the same time so i hope that kind of answers your question there, at the end, I did add a little bit of ink just for some texture on the fruit. So the ink and the, and the paint kind of, I go back and forth. So some people say, how do you do it? Do you do this or that? It kind of, it really, it really changes in, in the moment and as I'm working. So um, it's not an exact science. So, oh, that's so great. I'm glad that, that you liked it. Um, Jeannie, saying, you're saying you like this. I'm so glad. If there's anything else um, you want to ask while we're, we have about four more minutes, I'm just going to keep showing you how I would layer texture and lines on this for now. But If there's anything that pops up, Molly or um, Naporia, I'll look as well. But I'm just gonna let the time go for now unless I see any questions. And we do have one uh, one question from Mabel. Um, do you have a class called Fruit Bowl and is it free? Oh. No, I don't have a fruit bowl class. I did do a, I did do a challenge on Instagram recently that was a still life challenge. And so I did a lot of fruit and I don't have my sketch, current sketchbook to show you right now, but um, I don't have a class specifically on a fruit bowl. But, you know, if that is something that people want, I have, I'm always happy to take suggestions because I have 
four or five more classes with Derwent. They're all free happening um, throughout the year. So happy to take suggestions. Thank you. And then we have another question from James. What colors did you use? What colors? I, I used the browns. In the 24 pan, I used the browns. So I used burnt yellow ochre, red oxide, natural brown, and a little bit of Payne's gray. I didn't really use black, but I really just used these, these four colors. And I did use one intense pencil. I have the whole set here, but I had not included that on my list, so I didn't want to use them. And I it just, I pulled out the red oxide. Um, somebody saying that I did do a group one class? I'm not remembering this. Hmm. Whoever said that I did a football class, maybe send me a message or an email. I'm curious what I'm forgetting, um, but I'm happy to revisit that. And yeah, so fruit class, apples and oranges. Okay, okay, yeah. I've painted a lot of apples and oranges in classes, and that would be a great simple thing to do. So. Forest fruit class, apples and oranges, 4 7 2022. Are you sure it was me? It might have just been here on Michael's, but I don't know if that was me, unless I'm really losing my mind. <laughs> I put down your name. All right. Anyway, I'm going to figure that out. I will figure that out. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, I used the 3B pencil to draw, yes. Yes, I used the 3B pencil. But really what I want the takeaway to be is that you can play with these patterns with any medium that you have. Anything that you love to use, just play with these lines and play with the thicknesses of the lines. And the point is you can do it from with a simple pencil to a pen, to paints, to a mixture of pencil, pen, and paint which is what I did here. I'm just gonna bring that up to the, so you can see all those lines. So I always try and stress this, don't stress, don't get too wrapped up in the exact materials you need to use because learning and creating is, is really so much more about the process and practicing. And if there's something that you love and that you have and you want to use up and you spent money on, you know, use that. I do not, I don't, nobody wants to like spend more money and they don't have to. Just use what you have. Um, you're so welcome. So are we, are we good? Is there any last minute questions? I'm so happy that you enjoyed the class. Um, Nicoria, when with the recording, can can we make sure to save the chat? Oh, unfortunately, the um in the recording they won't show the chat. The chat isn't um viewable. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. I I I just clicked on save the chat, so maybe I was successful in saving it. I just like to um because I'm I'm sure I missed comments. You're so welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here.